Good evening, good morning. Um, the purpose of this video is pretty much to show you proof of concept of the uh, Plex Guide install. Um, everybody tends to read things differently. Some choose not to read. And sometimes people are running different systems uh, with different variations of Linux that kind of can cause headaches. So the first thing we're going to do is conduct a system update just to make sure that everything's running properly. Update complete. The next thing to do is to install Git. This is part of GitHub, obviously. Again, you'll have problems problems if you didn't conduct the update. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in. And it's going to go ahead and install. And now the install is complete. The next thing we're going to do is going to install Plex God. So basically what this is doing is now it's using that git command, what you just installed, and it's taking the script and installing it directly to your system. So here you can see it's cloning. It's pushing to your system. And then to make life easier for you, right below that is another command. Basically what it does is installs Plex Guide to your bin, kind of like your executable directory for Windows. And so in the future, all you have to do is type Plex Guide and it'll execute every single time. So now if I type Plex Guide, the menu will come up. To ensure that you have no problems, basically a pre-installer will go ahead and install certain things to make sure that everything's working accordingly. So here you're going to agree to it. And it's going to conduct a series of steps. And now it's installing Anzabel, or however you say it, which will push a series of steps to ensure that everything's installed correctly. Just remember that if it appears to be stuck at times, it's not. Basically, basically what it's doing is it's downloading stuff in the background. So if you have a really slow internet connection, this can contribute to it appearing that it's stalling, but it's not. Just leave the system alone. Now it's installing it along with supporting components. So now you can see it executing a series of steps. So basically it's going to install some common packages to assist you. Uh, what I've learned about in writing this guide um, from the beginning, which I wish I knew, was that uh, depending on the type of Linux that you're running from certain hosts, servers, or people, you may have certain things installed. So for example, like with Hertzner, they have very minimal things installed, and it's called minimal Ubuntu. And so things that you have on the regular Ubuntu disk that you would just download from the internet is missing off that. So by having common packages installing, um, it makes it life a little bit easier. Just be aware that uh, people who tend to run BPS uh, tend to have the most problems because they have uh, outdated kernels or some type of restriction that's generally not in place. Um, so usually VMs, dedicated servers, um, kind of like running your own stuff is, tends to be a little bit easier, including remote dedicated servers. But again, if you're having problems, it's usually your VPS, if you have one. It's still executing a series of steps. And now it is pre-installing rclone and Plex Drive. And it should be wrapping up shortly. It's installing Docker, which takes a little bit. And it should be wrapping up. It's installing Portainer. Uh, this program is very important because this is how you'll manage a lot of your containers, your programs, with a visual interface instead of using command line. So that's on port 9000. And that is it. And we'll be heading to the main menu shortly. So here's the main menu. So the first thing you're going to configure usually is rclone and plex drive. So you go here, you go to rclone. Basically, all you're going to use rclone for is basically sync stuff to your Google Drive. Um, basically, plex drive and unionfs is what's going to be combined uh, in order to uh, for your programs to scan, do other things. So basically, rclone is what's going to um, 
help sync your items to Google Drive. So here's the unencrypted our clone install. So we're going to go ahead and select that. If you paid attention to the instructions, usually you would click this. And you really only have to do one thing. So the unencrypted version is a lot easier to do. You have to select a new remote, pick option 10, enter your Google ID in secret, but make sure prior to that you obtain your um, Google ID in secret. So right now I'm setting up a new remote. I need to call a G drive per the instructions. I've had others who name their own thing. It will cause you problems. And then I'm going to select option number 10. Just make sure you pay attention to our clone because sometimes the numbers can change depending on the updates. And so basically I'm going to enter my client ID. And this is something you don't want to generally post or hand out because it's like the keys to your Google Drive. So paste there. And then we'll put in my client secret. Paste that there. If you see this JSON account thing, just hit enter. Do you want to use autoconfig if you're in a GUI? You will say yes. So now you'll go ahead and hit allow after earning your Google Drive information. If you are on a uh, terminal console and you do not have a GUI interface, you'll pick no and do the whole copy paste thing. Just make sure you take your time. So now that we are good to go, so close this out. Make sure you do not configure it as a team drive. If you do, you'll have all kinds of problems. You're going to say yes, this is okay. And then quit. And that is basically a power clone. So now it's going to install a series of files for you and services to ensure that your R clone runs and your Union FS runs. Just makes life easier for you. If for some reason you're running the encrypted one and you decide to switch, it will turn the encrypted stuff off and go to unencrypted. And that is basically a FAR clone. So to make sure that it works properly, you can use the info troubleshoot information, verify unencrypted R clone, and you notice that you see all this extra stuff in here. So basically, you should see at least G drive test because it's writing it at the time. Um, but again, put something in your Google Drive to make sure that it's working. That simple tool will help you a lot. Or you can type this CD mount flex drive 4 and then ls. And there you go. Oh, wrong one. Stupid me. Not doing flex drive, doing our clone. G drive. So you remember what we named it earlier? Directory. There we go. So we're going to start again by starting up the program. Just type PlexGuy. And now we're going to set up Plex Drive. Now here you have to be a little bit careful with, with the copying and pasting. If you're doing it this way, it's pretty easy. You usually won't have any problems. But if you're using Windows, you need to use a different set of keys like Shift, Control, then Insert key. It might be in the instructions, but do not do the copy and paste. So now we have to put in our same ID. I remember somebody else had a problem. Um, what they did was they made two different projects or basically like two different IDs and they used them differently and it was causing all kinds of problems. So make sure you use the same one that you did for our clone. So we'll go ahead and put this in here. And again, it's easy to paste when you're doing it this way. And then we're going to put in a secret. And here, you can basically 
copy it, or you can click it and Firefox should pop up. So basically I just received my authorization code. I'll go ahead and put that in. And now you will see the blue lettering and numbers. So once it says first cache build, process, finish, you're good to go. So what you need to do is you need to reboot. This is the step everybody forgets that I put out. If you forget to reboot and you keep doing things and adding mounts and trying to keep tying things, you're gonna get uh, mount errors and all kinds of other issues. So you press control C to break it. You can get out of this, exit, exit, or you just outright just turn off the computer. But by rebooting it too, you can also make sure that everything mounts up correctly. So we're waiting for it to load up still. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check, uh, because we're doing a reboot now, is we're gonna check uh, our clone Plex Drive and Union FS. So now that the program's loaded up, we're gonna go into Plex Guide, and all you have to do is go to one area, Info and Troubleshoot, Information. So we're gonna check three areas. We're gonna verify that our, our clone is working. So that's good to go. You can see stuff from Google Drive in there. And then we're gonna verify that Plex Drive works. Remember we rebooted, you see it is good to go. And then you're going to verify UnionFS, which is a combination of Plex Drive and your local drive. Long story short, you still want to check this. And there you go. Now that you see all three loaded up, you know that you are good to go and that your programs will have no issues. So if you want to type these commands manually too, you just type CD mount, like how I did earlier, uh, Plex Drive 4, and then you're saying and to execute this. And there you go. And then CD mount unionfs directory. And then same thing. CD mount G drive, which is the R clone. And then directory. And you see you're good to go. And then if you ever want to check on the status of the services, it's the same concept. And this is important here, checking on the services. So basically, this tells you that it executed and this is what it did. So that's good. And then status. Um, our clone, which is IG drive. Oops, get this backwards sometimes. Status our clone. Yep, so that's good to go. And then status. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Not important. Well, it is important, but this is the move service that will move your stuff later. So basically, this is the end of the video, so I hope this helps. If you have any questions, just jump in our channel.